Results from a World Mosquito Program trial have shown remarkable results in combating dengue fever. Scientists say that cases have been cut by 77% in a trial that manipulates the mosquitoes that spread the virus. Mosquitoes infected with a common bacteria have been found to uh, reduce the insect's ability to spread dengue, uh, which is found in tropical and subtropical climates worldwide, mostly in urban and semi-urban areas. Now, the global incidence of the virus has grown dramatically in recent decades, with about half of the world's population now at risk. Well, the World Mosquito Programme team says that it could be a solution to a condition commonly known as break bone fever because it causes severe pain in muscles and bones and explosive outbreaks can overwhelm uh, hospitals. The Director of Impact Assessment at the World Mosquito Programme, Dr Katie Sanders, uh, Anders, rather, explained to me earlier just how significant the trial has been. Uh, Katie Anders, thank you so much indeed for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. All right, so we're going to be talking a lot about dengue fever. And I just thought maybe we should start by explaining what that is. And that'll give us an idea of why this uh, new finding is so exciting. Yes, yeah, so dengue fever is a viral infection. It's uh, the world's uh, um, most rapidly growing mosquito-borne disease. So it's transmitted between people by mosquitoes. It causes a fever, oftentimes a mild fever, but in a lot of cases quite severe and requires hospitalisation. Around 100 million people each year get sick with dengue and tens of thousands of those die. So it's a, a very serious uh, public health problem in the tropical world. And this is literally all over the world, isn't it? And uh, the key to this is that it's uh, mosquito-borne. Yes, exactly. So more than 100 countries are affected by dengue. It's estimated that almost half the world's population lives in areas at risk of dengue. And yes, it's transmitted by a particular species of mosquito called the Aedes aegypti mosquito. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, what you have found. And it's all to do with something called uh, Wachovia, is that correct? Wolbachia. Wool so Wolbachia, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not something that most people would be familiar with. Wolbachia is a bacteria. It exists in the environment in many species of insect. But what's new uh, with what we have done is to introduce this bacteria into the Aedes aegypti mosquito that transmits dengue and other viruses like Zika and chikungunya. When this bacteria is inside the mosquito, the mosquitoes can no longer transmit those viruses between people. So it, it puts this block. And even though those mosquitoes still exist and they still bite people, they can't transmit viruses any longer. Um, how did you find this out? I mean, you know, the, this, this is, well, back here, <laughs> um, is in the fruit fly, isn't it? How did you make the connection between that and mosquitoes? Yeah, indeed. So the director of our program, Scott O'Neill, has been uh, working on the biology of Wolbachia for decades. It's been his interest throughout his career. And um, he had this sort of light bulb moment that uh, the fact that Wolbachia could be passed down through generations and spread through insect populations, combined with a discovery around 10 years ago that when the mosquitoes had Wolbachia, they couldn't transmit viruses, that was gave the idea that this could really be a, a public health intervention that could uh, be deployed into communities and be used to stop these viruses. All right, so then you started experimenting. It, it must be enormously difficult uh, to put this bacteria into mosquitoes that are tiny, tiny. How do you do that? Yes, yeah, so... In the first place, it gets into this mosquito species by injecting into the mosquitoes eggs. Those eggs then hatch, grow up into adult mosquitoes. And fortunately, you only have to do that once because Wolbachia is then passed down through successive generations. And when you release these mosquitoes into the community, they breed with the wild mosquito population and it spreads, Wolbachia spreads throughout the mosquito population. So eventually, you know, after a matter of months or years, 
because almost all of the mosquitoes in the community have Wolbachia in them. And that then persists. You only need to do this once. Wolbachia is then there in the mosquito population for years to follow. So what success rate have you found uh, with the use of uh, this Wolbachia uh, in mosquitoes? So the exciting results that we've had published uh, last week are from a trial in Jogjakarta, Indonesia, which is the first time we've conducted a what's called a randomised control trial, sort of gold standard trial to measure the efficacy against dengue. And the results we found, you know, exceeded our expectations. We found that in the neighbourhoods where Wolbachia mosquitoes were released, there was 77% uh, fewer dengue cases than in the untreated parts of the city. And even more exciting, 86% uh, less hospitalisation due to dengue. So this is really a great result uh, for Jogjakarta and for our projects elsewhere in the world. Wow, this is very exciting. So you uh, put this bacteria into the eggs and these mosquitoes then um, have this uh, bacteria attached to them. And as a result of that, they struggle to produce the, the dengue uh, um, uh, uh, portion that then harms us. Does this harm the mosquitoes, the uh, uh, Wolbachia? It doesn't, no. It's a, a symbiotic bacteria, so it lives happily inside uh, the mosquito's cells. Uh, what it does is it, uh, the reason we think it blocks dengue, and also I should mention in the lab it e works equally well against Zika and chikungunya and yellow fever viruses that are transmitted by the same mosquito. What we think it does inside the mosquito cells is use up the energy and the nutrients uh, to, by the Wolbachia replicating itself, it uses those nutrients that the virus would otherwise need to replicate and to be passed on between humans. So it prevents the mosquito from being able to uh, sort of replicate the virus and pass it on when it bites the next person. But it doesn't cause the mosquito any harm itself. These mosquitoes live and bite, behave like they normally would. These same mosquitoes then will have other eggs. Do you have to keep on injecting those eggs as well? Or does something happen to the mosquito, uh, uh, perhaps in its DNA? Uh, nothing happens to the mosquito's DNA, but the Wolbachia is in the ovaries of the mosquito, so it gets passed down in the eggs to the next generation. So it's inherited through the mosquito population. So once it's in the mosquito population, it self-sustains there without needing to inject into the eggs again and without needing to release any more mosquitoes going forward. We've seen now um, 10 years after the initial releases of these mosquitoes in northern Queensland in Australia, you can still go back, collect mosquitoes from the field and find that 10 years later they still have Wolbachia in there. So, I mean, what you're talking about suggests that uh, dengue fever can eventually be eradicated. That's what we're, we're really hopeful about, you know, at least at a city level. So, as I said, dengue, you know, affects half the world's population. It's going to take time to scale this up across uh, big cities. But uh, in the cities where we're currently working, we expect to see going forward an even bigger impact than what we've measured in this study as Wolbachia really reaches high levels and sustains over time. And we're very hopeful to see dengue eliminated as a public health problem. And I suppose the key to this is finding a, a cheap and easy way to inject this uh, Wolbachia into the eggs. And is this uh, the process that you're going through now? Yeah, so fortunately we don't have to do that injection again, but we do need to uh, produce the mosquitoes at scale. So... Uh, in Indonesia, for example, uh, several million mosquitoes got released over a period of nine months. So there's a lot of uh, production, mosquito production and release that has to happen. And to do that over large cities at scale is what we're looking at doing now. Our next stage is really looking at how we can scale up to have this reach as many people as possible over the next 10 years. I was fascinated to find out, and one doesn't think about these things because these little creatures are just annoying, but they are male and female mosquitoes. And I wonder what the difference is in the process uh, 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 between the male and the female. 
Yeah, sure. So only the mis uh, female mosquitoes are the ones that bite, actually, because they need the blood meal. Um, and we release uh, both male and female mosquitoes with Wolbachia in them. Uh, what it's the female mosquitoes with Wolbachia that pass that on to the next generation. The job of the male Wolbachia mosquitoes actually is important as well, because when a male Wolbachia carrying mosquito breeds with a, a wild mosquito that doesn't have Wolbachia, her eggs won't hatch. So it has this nifty ability to, you know, uh, favour the Wolbachia carrying mosquitoes in the population and, and push that forward. But yes, we do release both male and female mosquitoes. People in Africa are probably wondering uh, why they should be excited. Um, it doesn't happen as endemically in parts of this continent, but uh, we're not immune to uh, a dengue fever, are we? Not at all. So I think um, dengue is being increasingly recognised as a cause of fever in Africa and uh, certainly a large public health problem as well. Uh, Africa is definitely on our radar, the continent of Africa, somewhere that we see this being very beneficial in years to come. We don't yet have any projects there, but we're very excited about being able to do that in the, in the um, years coming. So the key ingredient is well back here. Uh, the question then becomes, is there an endless supply of this bacteria? Uh, yes, there is. There is. It, it's out there in the environment living in billions of insects and it uh, can be uh, generated just by breeding more mosquitoes in a lab that carry this Wolbachia, releasing those into the field, and it sustains itself out there. So it's a durable, sustainable intervention where nothing, yeah, it's an endless supply. Yeah. And Wolbachia is not harmful to human beings. It's not harmful to human beings. And the reason that we know that is because many biting insects uh, naturally carry this uh, bacteria. So we all will have been bitten over time by insects with Wolbachia in them. Studies have also been done looking at whether people who are bitten by these uh, mosquitoes we release, whether they make antibodies to the Wolbachia indicating an immune response they don't whether there's any um, harmful effects of the, in the populations where these have been uh, released, there's no signal of that whatsoever. Obviously, it's something that we monitor carefully, but there's also been independent risk assessments done in all the countries where we've worked um, that have uh, uh, deemed this to have negligible risk. So really seems to be very safe. And I think just a short while ago, you said that this actually goes beyond dengue fever, that uh, there are other uh, diseases that can be dealt with with the same uh, uh, Wolcobia uh, uh, bacteria. That's right. So uh, studies in the laboratory have shown it's equally effective against uh, Zika, which has obviously uh, been a very big public health challenge over the last few years, as well as uh, chikungunya, yellow fever. So those uh, that's a really exciting aspect of it, that just by uh, one intervention, we'll be able to have an impact on multiple diseases that are transmitted by the same mosquito. All right, this is all very exciting. So when do you think that uh, this is going to become mainstream treatment? Well, I think we're at that point now that we have a green light, really, to, to say we need to focus on scaling this up to as many places as we can as rapidly as possible. That depends, obviously, on funding, on, on the right partnerships to do that. But over the next five to ten years, I'd say we'll see um, a rapid expansion of this uh, to new countries and within the 11 countries where we're already working. So in a nutshell, I mean, this is pretty revolutionary stuff that we're talking about here. It really is because of the large uh, burden of dengue globally and because the, despite best efforts to control dengue up to now with insecticides, with reducing breeding sites for mosquitoes, um, that it hasn't worked. It's very difficult to sustain at scale. So there's been a really pressing need for new effective interventions against dengue. That's why these results are, are really exciting.
Dr. Katie Anders, thank you so, so much indeed for joining us. Congratulations on uh, this uh, miracle, I would say, a uh, miracle treatment that uh, you have developed. And we wish you the best of luck because I, I suspect um, hundreds of millions of people will find some relief as a result of uh, uh, these findings. Thank you so much indeed for joining us and explaining it all to us. Thanks very much.